Charles Oliveira just disposed of Islam Makashev's next biggest test in the first round, and he proved me wrong. That's right. I know a lot of you guys are coming here to clown me for getting my pick wrong, even though I... <laughs> All right. Hold on. Hold on. Even though I did say... All right. Wait a second. Wait a second. There's no coping yet. All right. There's no coping yet. I got my pick wrong, bro. I'm just going to own up right now. All right. I got it wrong. I picked Benil Dariush to TKO Charles Oliveira, and I'm smirking because I feel guilty talking to you right now for doubting DeBronx, the most finishes in UFC history, violently TKOing Benil Dariush with his hammer fists in the second round. He caught Benil Dariush with a head kick. He followed up immediately with the right hand. He hid the head kick behind a right hand, then followed the head kick with a right hand, then followed up with two hooks. The second hook clipped Benil Dariush on the top of the head, and he was on Crip Street after that. Yes, we saw Benil have a beautiful scramble to get Charles off of his back, but he was just too rocked, and Charles Oliveira teed off on him with hammer fists. That's the finish. That was the fight. They had a little bit of a grappling exchange. I got my pick wrong. I thought Charles Oliveira was going to have to land a right hand. I thought Benil Dariush was going to be a little bit more active with his left hand. And I did not expect Charles Oliveira to, you know, fuck the activity of Benil Dariush's left hand. That didn't even matter. Charles Oliveira just threw that head kick right away after they broke off of a clinch and didn't give Benil Dariush a chance to throw the left hand. So it didn't even matter. What I said going into this fight is that Charles Oliveira gets hit. He doesn't defend one side of his face. And that's going to be his demise. And that didn't happen. And yes, I picked against him. Yes, I doubted him. After watching all the footage leading up to this fight, all the holes in Charles Oliveira's defense, which were still kind of there tonight, but it didn't fucking matter because he showed up like a man on a mission. And he always shows up a man on a mission. But again, bro, there was something different about him, bro. He proved me wrong because he still had that technical flaw where he likes to extend his lead hand. He doesn't protect this part of his face. He was doing that against Benil, but it didn't matter because guess what? He added a new tool to his arsenal. Him and his team must have made a perfect read in their training camp to set up that high kick because Benil Dariush got clipped with it twice in this fight. And they were setting it up with the right hand. That's why I say it's Leon Edwards. That's because it's pretty much identical to the way Leon Edwards was able to go out there and head kick Kamaru Usman. And we've seen that a lot. And that adjustment allowed Charles Oliveira to go out there and just fuck Benil up on the feet and not make it close at all. And as soon as he rocked Benil Dariush, he just never let him off the hook. And that's why Charles Oliveira is the best finisher in UFC history. You cannot afford to get hurt by this man. And Benil was doing well too. He had Charles Oliveira on the ground. Remember, Charles went for the takedown, went for the body lock. The same thing that happened in the Islam Makashev fight, where he ended up on bottom, happened in this one. He tried to take Benil down with that body lock, and he got reversed. Benil got on top. And I just have to say this, man. Benil's grappling is insane. Even when he was rocked, and I know you guys saw this too, when Charles dropped Benil with that right hook, and he tried to get on Benil's back, Benil did a Gramby roll. He, he straight up did like some 360 Gramby roll and just completely said, no, you're not taking my back. It's like, no matter how rocked Benil is, you, you can't out scramble him. So I was wrong, guys. I stand by staying Benil there. You should still one of the best fighters in the lightweight division is elite as it gets. And we saw that on the ground, especially, but man, Charles was relentless. I mean, that was basically the way in which I saw Charles Oliveira being able to go out there and finish Islam back when they fought last October. And it just didn't pan out that way. And there might actually be something to Charles Oliveira looking really out of it on the feet against Islam Makhachev. That being said, Islam is crisper on the feet. But let's we're going to see this fight. All right. We are going to see Islam Makhachev and Charles Oliveira. I cannot fucking wait for that because that in and of itself is going to be massive. And although we'll never get the same feeling that we had before Charles and Islam won, it's more dramatic than it ever would have been before. Because you have a guy like Charles who had such a beautiful title reign and all the drama that he brought in and outside the cage. Not bad drama, but just his backstory being incredible. To losing that belt, to getting written off by people like me, of course, to now beating the guy that everyone said, or a lot of people were saying, was going to be Islam Makhachev's next big test. That Benil Dariush was the truth, and he was the most underrated guy in the division. 
And I still stand by Benil Darius being an incredibly good fighter. And the fact that Charles went out there and beat a guy that I said was a mirror matchup to Islam Makhachev, it, it's a testament to how good Charles Oliveira is when he shows up. I know I said that he was talking all this shit about the fact that he didn't show up in Abu Dhabi, but I mean, maybe he didn't. Maybe that wasn't him. Maybe he got sick. Maybe it was the worst weight cut of his life because there must be something to it. I do think that Benil Dariush is insanely good. And for Charles Oliveira to beat that guy shows that he is, again, capable of getting his belt back. And the fight with Islam Makhachev is probably going to be closer. And like, I had a hard time believing that I would ever get that excited for Charles versus Islam too, although it's a, a fight that I'll always want to watch. I am very excited for it now because if Charles gets that pep in his step again and he has an easier weight cut because let's be real, like he did look pretty slim. You know what I mean? I noticed that when Charles walked out to the cage that he didn't look as puffed up as he did when he fought Islam Makhachev. He weighed two pounds less than what he needed to. I'm pretty sure he was supposed to weigh in at what, 156? And he just looked lighter and maybe that was good for his speed. So maybe this slimmer and lighter version of Charles that just disposed of Benil could go out there and land a good shot on Islam Makhachev and could hurt him. And that's ultimately what matters when it comes down to a Charles Oliveira fight. If he hurts someone, they're basically screwed. How could you not like Charles Oliveira? And there's just something else that he brings into the cage, man. Everyone loves him. You know what I mean? And I was talking about this with my friend the other day. Like if Charles would win, there is no way that the UFC is going to give Dustin Poirier and Justin Gagey a title shot ahead of him. Even if Javier Mendez and Islam Makhachev's team are going to be saying, no, he doesn't deserve it. The fans are going to erupt. The MMA world will go berserk with this guy on top again. And that's how it's going to be. We need the UFC to make this fight happen. Let's make it as soon as possible. Forget Justin Gagey. Forget Dustin Poirier. We don't need to see a part two. All right, we don't want to see Dustin get choked out in the second round by Islam Makhachev. We don't want to see Justin Gagey get folded up like a pretzel within the first grappling exchange against any grappler in that division, let alone Islam Makhachev. We want a well-rounded guy testing Islam. Those are the fights that are going to excite the fans. And now is the time to be loud. Now is the time to let the UFC know that like this fight needs to happen because they're still going to fuck around with that, you know, uh, midlife crisis belt that they've got going on. The BMF belt like that is cool. The fight's going to be fun. But come on, man. Those guys are not the real challenge for the guy that's holding the belt right now. Now, Charles was calling himself the champ when he got on the mic and started speaking English. Of course, uh, I was so wrong that Charles actually just changed his language completely. So we could see a little bit of a, a lighter Charles Oliveira go in there to fight Islam Makhachev, rejuvenated, refreshed, easier weight cut, and we could see him just go out there and knock Islam out. But we do have to remember, Islam Makhachev's striking defense is insanely good, and he's just a really crisp counter-striker, and he has really fast hands as well. And Islam is a champ for a reason, and... You know, even if a, a better version of Charles Oliveira shows up, it's going to be hard to hurt Islam Makhachev to begin with. But we'll see. I can't wait for this fight. The UFC has to make this fight. All right. Abu Dhabi, Oliveira, Makhachev 2 is massive. It's probably bigger than it ever was before. I think that Charles Oliveira, of course, he would have been a mega star if he beat Islam. But now there's that beautiful storyline there. The guy lost his belt. He's coming back for it. If he beats Islam Makhachev, that is the lightweight goat, 100%. Again, Benil Dariush, having that guy on your resume speaks volumes. So yeah, I was wrong, but you're not going to see me throw a fit because I'm a massive Charles Oliveira fan, just like the next guy. And I was concerned for him. I was doubting him. And he just got me back on the Charles Oliveira train, baby. And you guys ain't kicking me off. You're not kicking me off this time. I'm back on the train, dude. I'm picking him to beat Islam. Nah, I'm not picking him to beat Islam. But like, we'll see. We'll see, man. It's exciting. It's going to be exciting. Uh, I am really going to be putting in the hours. Okay? I'm going to be putting in the hours. Studying for UFC 290. Because it would be embarrassing if I got... 
the main event for 290 wrong too, man. Um, yeah, bro. For Charles to go out there and get it done. I got a smile on my face. I'm excited for the Islam Makhachev rematch. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, Charles proved me wrong. And we're all going to celebrate nonetheless. Till next time.